Hello, 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 and welcome to Believe. That's B-L-E-A-V in Lions, right here on the Believe Network. I'm your host, at Javanaugh87, Jack Kavanaugh, and I am joined by the all-pro safety that would have added more than what we saw from the Lions defense today against the Patriots. Glover Quinn here to join me and wallow in our misery together. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'm tired, man. I'm tired of every Sunday at almost three, between three and four o'clock my time of getting on and having these sad feelings in my heart about the Lions, man. Like, I now feel the pain of fans for so many years, you know, of having to have that never really good feeling on a Sunday afternoon. I apologize to all of the fans that are diehards that man this is difficult man this is difficult let's uh I, I i'm sure i'll say more but <laughs> i apologize to the fans because this is difficult bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports contests and events with first to market odds and lines Find reviews and news for every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports information from live in game betting, props, and futures. Head to Bet Online today. Or use your mobile device to join today and make your first sports bet. Use our promo code BELIEVE50 to receive 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. That's B L E A V 50. Bet online where the game starts. It was difficult from start to finish. And to start things off, the highest scoring offense in the NFL, averaging 35 points a game, goose egg. That's the, the first major issue. Next, we have a coaching staff that made some moves. They shook things up. And it just didn't go anywhere through injury. So Savian Smith, first play of the game. He ends up going down, carted off. We're hoping for the best for Savian. Our thoughts and prayers are with him and his family. Then Deshaun Elliott comes back in, and he was benched for this game, as was uh, Mike Hughes, the slot cornerback, as was Amani Oruwarie, who was a healthy scratch. No injury, just unactive on game day. You know, I, I was a little surprised by... The benching of Elliot. I mean, I was too. Um, I, 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 like I say, I always say this. I don't see the all twenty-two film, but just from watching the games, he's been probably one of the bright spots. Tackling, you know, I haven't seen a lot in coverage, but tackling-wise, I felt like he's played tough, made some good, strong tackles. Um, so I was surprised that they benched him. A money, I was not surprised. I haven't saw it all year. I didn't see it in training camp. I said that. Um, Mike Hughes, I mean, he just came over. So they must have went through um well, they were just like, you know what? We're benching everybody. All you vets walking around here like you guys are big time you're not you're not big time so we're benching you guys and we're going with these guys that are young and maybe like maybe they want to play um 
and then injuries hit you. Yeah. And now I need you guys. So that's just a sucky feeling for the coaches because things backfired. Um, but Deshaun Elliott came in, caught an interception. First time we saw the line soccer trot. I don't know if that's what they needed. You know, a reality check. Um, but the Lions couldn't stay healthy in the secondary all day. I mean, Akuda went down. Elliott went down. Like we said, Savion went down. Hopefully he's okay. It looked looked scary. Right. Um Melifonu came in. He goes down first play. Like Will Harris goes down. Will Harris goes down. You know, Matt Patricia drafted Jeff Okuda. They went at Jeff Okuda today. He didn't step up. It just was a tough day. But it's hard to put it all on the line secondary because, I mean, I don't see any production from any other of the groups. I don't see anything coming from the D-line. don't see anything coming from the linebackers. Anzalone made a couple good plays, but I just don't see it. And you look at the box score, and I don't like box score scouting as a rule, but just some interesting things of notes. Zero sacks for the Detroit Lions today. Six tackles for loss, three of them by Deshaun Elliott. It felt as though Elliott, that did light a fire under him with the benching. He, I thought he played pretty well today made some plays at the very least played better than some other players and still he struggled but it seemed he was inspired while the rest of the team was not because the only time i saw aiden hutchinson he got a pressure on the quarterback and he missed let's it. bailey zappy escape for the first down as you know, like i'm like that was the, that was the only time that i felt like we saw him and it again too this seems to just happen week after week with Hutchinson where he'll get one, maybe two pressures and both of them result in the first down anyways. Yeah. You know, Russian quarterbacks in the NFL and Russian quarterbacks in college is different. When you're in college, you're playing with college players at college levels. When you're in the NFL, you're playing with NFL players at NFL levels, right? If, if he played against Bailey Zappi last year at Michigan and he was at Western Kentucky, it probably was a sack because Bailey Zappi was at Western Kentucky and he was in college. Now he's been in the NFL. He's been in the NFL system, getting coached by NFL players. So the things that he maybe see, the footwork, the knowledge that he's gained over these few couple months may have helped Bailey Zappi avoid a sack. That is the difference in college and the NFL. It just is what it is. Last year we saw Hutchinson come free. And those were sacks nine out of ten times in college. In the NFL, those are first downs. Why? Because you don't break down. You don't secure. You don't go at the right proper angles. You're not going at the top shoulder. You're going at the bottom shoulder, right? You're going at all these different things, and you're allowing the quarterbacks to get out of the pocket. And it's resulting in first downs. And so, once again, you know, if there wasn't a quarterback controversy in New England, the Lions created one because Bailey Zappi, you know, he played fairly well. What they asked him to do, he did it. He executed. And, you know, last week when the Lions played, right, when the Lions played last week, what did I say? I said the Lions were losing or missing some offensive contenders, right? DeAndre Swift was out. Amon Ross St. Brown was out. Um, DJ Chark was out. So they were missing some key guys on the offensive side of the ball, right? So in those situations, your defense has to step up because we can't expect the Lions to score 45 points, right? Yes, they scored 45 last week, but you don't go into the game expecting that because you're missing three offensive stars, right? The Patriots came in today. No, seemed like they knew that they had a backup quarterback, a young guy, and Bailey Zappi. And our defense pitched a shutout. So long as Bailey Zappi doesn't lose the game and throw a couple pick sixes or have fumbles that go for touchdowns, 
they're going to win the game because the defense put it on their shoulder. Defense played lights out. Matt Judon was unstoppable. The safety, Josh Jackson, uh, whatever. I think his name is Josh Jackson. Jack Jones. Um, Jack Jones. Yeah, I'm sorry. Josh Jackson, I think he's the one. J- JC, he's the one in San Diego right now. Um, but Jack Jones, in, an incredible play. That interception reminded me of the interception that I called in New Orleans a couple years ago in 2016 on the sideline when you go with the backwards toe tap. Like, it's a beautiful play. Um, so their defense played incredible. Stopped the lines seven times, I think, on fourth down or five times, whatever, right? And I feel like Dan Campbell is in a situation now where fourth down, he's haunted. So he has all these thoughts in his head, right? And it goes all the way back to the Minnesota game. You're going for it on fourth down. Then you don't go for it at the end of the game. Then you come back the next week, last week, and you go for it a few times on fourth down, and it hurts you. Now you're in this situation. But a lot of a lot of that has to do with you don't have a kicker that you feel confident hitting anything over 45 yards. Anything in the 45 or anything to 48 to 50 plus, you don't have confidence in the kicker hitting it so when you're at the 40 yard line you're not punting it but you're not kicking a 57 yard either when you're at the 35 yard line i don't know if you feel very confident kicking a 51 yarder so you're you're getting forced in those situations where i don't trust the field goal kicker and it's too far to punt too close to punt so i'd rather just go for it but when you look at how the season has played out now fourth down is just kind of – but why are you in so many fourth downs? Why, why aren't you converting on third down? Like, it's just like a domino effect, man. Just just happens over and over and over. And the Lions are not doing a good enough job to get out of the hole. They're not doing a good enough job executing on first, second, or third down. And we're seeing a one-and-four football team that – I mean, I didn't see what happened with Minnesota today. Uh, I know Chicago was beating them. I didn't see the end of it. What that's final won score? It, won in the end. Minnesota won it. Yeah. You're four games behind in week six. Tough. Yeah. Tough. They're four and one. You're one and four, but they beat you head to head. You're four games behind. Tough. Just, it's gonna get real cold in Detroit. It is because the rest of the schedule doesn't look as good as we thought. No, in the preseason, so we get the bye now, and then we come out with the Dallas Cowboys, who may or may not have Dak Prescott back. And at this point, does it matter if they have Dak Prescott, if they have Cooper Rush, if they have me at quarterback? Lions aren't stopping anyone, so they're not. Where? What do the Lions do for the bye after this beatdown by the Patriots? Do they take time to clear their heads? Do they get into it and try and build something? How how do they handle this? You know, I, I think I think they have to take some time away. I think they all need some time away. Um, I think coming off the hard knocks, coming off the expectations that were placed on them and the way that these first five games have gone so promising early in the season, right? But at this point, they seem so far away from a win. You you got the number one offense in the league and they scored zero points today against a one and three Patriots team, Right. Zero points. Yeah, you're missing DeAndre Swift. Yeah, Amon is is back out there, but you can tell he's hurt. At this situation, I would have rather them just not play him today. Yeah. Give him last week, give him this week, give him the bye week, and now you can hopefully come back. But I think they need some time away. And a lot of times you will see in the bye week they want to – uh, go and work them harder. Go and do this. Go and do that. That's not the case. I mean, it's the NFL. These are the players that you have. And they're NFL football players. 
yeah, they can get a little better. But working them hard at practice for two days, not going to change the world. Give them some time away. They need to reflect. They need to decide what it is that we really want to be. Because right now, it's the NFL, man. Hype doesn't win football games. You know what I'm saying? Like, none of that stuff wins football games. You have to go out and you have to win the games. And I feel like everybody right now is reaching, scratching, clawing. I feel like the coaching staff is reaching. They don't They don't know this. They don't, like, guys that they depended on are not showing up, right? Guys that, like, I just feel like the injuries and, and like, all these different things are just mounting on them right now, and they're not in a good situation, and I think they need some time away. And after that time away, we get the Cowboys, as we talked about. Lions get the Dolphins at home, Packers at home, and then the Bears on the road before heading to New York. And that's in late November. And the Giants are a better team than we thought. You pointed that out. You think number eight on your... I mean, I had them number eight last week. They're going to move up this week. Yep. You know, the Giants are a four-one football team, and you know, looking at looking at my looking at my power rankings, right? I, I was kind of just l- like f- glancing through them as I'm looking at some of the games, and I think I had the Cleveland Browns as like the fifteenth, and I had the Chargers as the fourteenth. I had the Chargers one step ahead of Cleveland, and you look at that game; it's thirty to twenty-eight. Chargers finally get get a win, right? But I had those teams basically what for what. And you look at the game, it was basically what for what. Right? The Texans look like the Texans got a win against Jacksonville. Right? So I had the Texans at the very bottom. That won't move them up very much, but it'll move Jacksonville down because maybe they're not as good of a football team as we thought they were. Right? Uh I had the Vikings up there. And the thing about the Vikings, people are gonna say, Oh, they're not that good, they're not that good. Okay, they're going to say the Vikings are not that good. But at the end of the day, the thing about it in the NFL is finding ways to win football games. And the Vikings are finding ways to win. I think Chicago it came back and took the lead late in that game. And the Vikings must have put together a drive in the last possession and scored a touchdown and won the game. They're 4-1 football team. You have to give them credit for finding ways to win the football games, regardless of how pretty it is, they are finding ways to win and other teams are finding ways to lose, right? You look at the Jets. I put the Dolphins at where they were because of their record, but without their starting quarterback, I didn't feel like they were that team. And the Jets blew them away. Yeah, Teddy Bridgewater. Teddy Bridgewater got hurt. Yeah. You know, all these different things, right? So, the Dolphins are that. The Buccaneers, I had them ahead of the Falcons, and they beat the Falcons by six. That's kind of normal. The Titans, I had them a little ahead of the Commanders. They won by four points. Like, I mean, the Lions, I had them the better one and three team, and they proved they didn't. So I feel like the Lions at this point, outside of the Steelers, I probably would have the and the Commanders. I probably would have the Lions probably the – I mean, the Texans are probably jump ahead of the Lions right now because the Texans have been playing tough, close games. They just haven't found a way to win, and then they found a way to beat a Jacksonville team. They'll probably move ahead of the Lions to me because the Lions right now don't have anything going in their favor, nothing at all. Not a damn thing, and that's so frustrating. Josh Reynolds, 92 yards, was the highlight of offense and a lot of that just felt kind of garbage timey where the game was already out of reach and we're just putting up some numbers and when that's the highlight is a 92 yard day from a wide receiver and no points (sighs) where do we go from here glover and if this continues what ends up happening for the lions because dan campbell has a six-year contract he's here for a while but Fans are going to start to talk. Oh, is this just another Matt Patricia? Is this just the Lions being the Lions? So 
Does that creep into the building at all? Do the lines have to scapegoat anyone at any point if this continues? And what are we looking at for the future? Because I truly don't know right now. Like I said, I, I, I think... I think deep down inside, New Lions organization, if you believe wholeheartedly in the guys that you have from a coaching standpoint, you just got to stick through the growing pains. Because if you're always changing, you're always going to be in the same boat. Mm -hmm. So if you believe that Dan Campbell is the head coach to lead the Detroit Lions, if you feel Aaron Glenn is the defensive coordinator, then you got to stick with those guys and you just got to give them time to get the players, get the system, get everything the way it needs to be. But like I said, you look back at, you look back at the guys It's you have to draft or you have to bring in guys who are playmakers. This is a playmaking league. Yes. You have some guys who can just be solid players. But for the most part, this is a playmakers league. You have to go out and make plays. You cannot sit back and wait for the other team to mess up. These are pros. They're not going to mess up that often. You have to go out and force them. You have to go out and make plays. And you look at a lot of the penalties that Jeff was getting today. He's downfield. He's not even looking for the ball. That's because he's not trying to intercept the ball. That's because he's not an interceptor. He wasn't an interceptor in college. He's not an interceptor. He's a physical, aggressive type of corner. And then, you know, you look at some of his tackling today. Wasn't great. I don't know if anybody really wanted to tackle that much today, right? So you have to get some guys that want to be playmakers, right? And I don't like to just continue to compare these things, but I felt like I wanted to be a playmaker when I was younger in my career. I wanted to make tackles. I was trying to show that I could play. So I wanted to make tackles and show that I was tough enough. As I got older, I didn't care about that anymore. I wanted the ball. I wanted to be a playmaker. I wanted to get interceptions. I wanted to get fumbles. I wanted to, I wanted to find ways to get the ball. And then you look at the guys around me, Darius Slay. He was a playmaker, multiple interceptions, fumble recoveries, Quandre Diggs, multiple interceptions, right? Playmakers. You have to have guys who understand how to go and get the football. The game is way too hard to not get extra possessions from turnovers. We've seen a turnover today in the Lions game. Jared Goff fumble. One bounce of the ball is going the other way. It's a, it's a touchdown. Right before the half. Killers. Those are killers. Why can't the Lions get some of those things? All right? Deshaun Elliott, you dive. You catch the interception, right? There's nobody around you. Get up. Try to go and score. Let's not, let's not settle for the soccer trot. Try to go and score. We know our offense is down some playmakers. We got to try to score on defense, or we got to try to give the offense a shorter field. So I just don't see it anywhere right now for the Lions. I don't know where it could come from. I just don't. And when the morale is down, it's different when you are not on hard knocks. Because when you're on hard knocks, the world sees you, right? And I tell my kids this all the time. You got to take the good with the bad, right? So the good is, so a lot of people see the lines. A lot of people see Coach Campbell. A lot of people are excited. They want to see, oh, man, I think the lines could be this. I got I think they could be that. The bad is, it's a lot of expectations from a lot of people. And when you don't show up, now those same people that had the expectations are the same people that are saying uh, they're the same old lines. The same old lines, right? And every time they show a highlight on NFL Network or ESPN, they're going to say, you know, the lines, you know, everybody was loving these guys on Hard Knocks, but they come out and they show that they are who the lines have been, right? 
It's tough. It's very, 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 very tough. And I feel like the bye week couldn't have came at a better time. One and four going into the bye. They need some time away. They need some time away. They need some sort of spark. And whether that's being away from the field, whether that's getting DeAndre Swift back against the Cowboys after the bye, whatever it is, something has to happen to provide that spark. And we'll be waiting for it. We will be here to cover it if and when it does happen. Because for now, it's feeling pretty... It's feeling pretty tough. I've I've lost my smile, as some might say. The glasses are off until the Lions give me a reason to wear them. Yeah. I, I mean, golly, bro. I was like a <laughs> fan. Like, I literally felt like the fan. I'm like, bro, I got to continue to watch so I can – see what's going on but this is really not something that i want to watch like i literally wanted to cut the tv off there was no energy or excitement nowhere from the start of the game from the very beginning there was nothing yeah when you texted me that you were ready to turn the game off i I, (laughs) that did give me a chuckle because there was nothing to keep an eye on there was nothing to keep me watching there was nobody that i wanted to see or was just hoping well you know it's been a rough game but at at least i can hang my hat on this there's nothing to hang my hat on nothing nothing i'm not leaving this game with not one thing not one thing that i can say that the line's doing well not one jared golf he's been solid all year but we see He's not a guy that can take anybody and just get things done. Like, what was the game plan? Like, if you look at the game, what do you feel like the game plan was against New England? What do you feel like they tried to do offensively? What, like, what? Because you know how you can see some games, you can say, you know what? They really want to work the screen game, and they really want to get rid of the ball quickly to neutralize a pass rush or you know what they really was taking shots downfield they they felt like they could get over the top of their secondary and they really you know they really ran a lot of balls to the outside because they felt like they could get to the edge of the defense and that was their plan hey they really worked the play action game you know they was running the ball a lot first and second down getting yards getting yards and that opened up the, like what was the plan like what do you feel like they were trying to do There there wasn't really a cohesive strategy. It just kind of felt like when you're playing Madden, oh, this one sounds good. This one sounds good. This one sounds good. There's no no flow. There's no building. There's no stacking concepts onto each other. There's no... They got shut out. When was the last time the number one offense in the NFL got shut out? Heartbreaking by the Patriots. Yeah. They didn't get shut out by the number one defense in the NFL. They got shut out by a one and three team. That's now a two and three team. And with the way their defense played today, with what they asked Bailey Zappi to do and what he did, they'll move up in the rankings. Just is what it is. It is what it is. And unfortunately, we've got nothing more to say. I got at nothing. This point. I got nothing. I got nothing. I, so. I don't even know. I I literally am at a loss. I'm at a loss. Yeah. I am speechless, and that is not something that happens often. You can find Glover everywhere. Glover Quinn on Instagram. You can find all of his channels for there. Any pluggables to plug aside from that? You know what? I need to go and do some things that brings me happiness, peace, 
So I think I would do that today. I will go to my happy place and I've been building things, enjoying those things. And I will, I will present those things to you guys shortly. They're freaking awesome. Um, but I think I'm gonna do that today because I can't keep doing I can't keep feeling like this at four o'clock on a Sunday. I just can't. It just takes my whole it just takes my whole vibe, man. Yeah. It takes my whole vibe. <laughs> keep, like it literally kills my whole vibe. So I have to be able, able to combat that. So I don't have any pluggables right now. Um exactly. But I will be bringing you guys something. Shortly, I'm. I'm just. I just like to work on things and make sure that they are ready for when I bring them to you guys. So I will leave it at that. So make sure you follow Glover Glover Quinn on Instagram. You can find all of his accounts there because you don't want to miss what's coming. You can find me everywhere at Javana eighty seven. You can find us on the Believe in Lions podcast. Make sure you leave a rating review all that fun stuff give us some joy to help combat this terrible terrible day and until then we will see you next time peace